I was wondering how I can go about filing a report and complaint on an individual who is offering therapy and marriage counseling services without any professional certification. I was at the very lowest point in my life. After attempting suicide and overdosing on pills, Karen De La Carrier advised me not to seek medical care, not to see a therapist as they have bad stats, and instead took me at my lowest to enrich herself to the tune of $7,500. I want Karen to be responsible and accountable for what she did to me, and that's why I'm speaking up publicly about this matter. Ever since I released my last video on Karen, there's been an overwhelming amount of people who have written to me to come forward with their experiences with Karen. Karen doesn't realize that it's actually a crime to offer therapy services without a professional license, and she was actually committing malpractice by doing so. This could land her behind bars. Ron Miscavige, David Miscavige's dad, actually was asked what he thought about the Mangotology video about Karen De La Carriere. This is what Ron Miscavige had to say about my video. So I'm going to take you on the journey with me of how Karen actually ropes people into her cult called the Outer Bangs, and how she actually manipulates and abuses other people just like how she did to myself. Hey guys, welcome to Mangotology and thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Stephen Mango and I'm an ex-Scientologist that works here on YouTube to expose Scientology. So if you'd like to stay up to date on all my videos, please make sure to go down below, hit that red subscribe button, and turn on your bell notifications, and you'll get an alert whenever I release a new video exposing Scientology. And for today's video, it is part two to the video I made the other day called Exposing Independent Scientology and My Crazy $7,500 Auditing Session. If you haven't already seen that video, I highly suggest that you pause this video and go watch that one first. Now that video is around 40 45 minutes to 49 minutes long, somewhere in that time range. I know it's a long video, but I highly suggest starting there because it tells you all of the backstory, everything that I went through over my seven year history with the independent auditor who I was good friends with, who later out turned to be a very toxic, manipulative individual who started running their own cult. Now, I didn't actually say the name of the person who I'm talking about, in the last video, well, it's for multiple reasons why I didn't do that initially, and I guess some of those reasons stemmed more from the fear of speaking out about this person. The second reason was, was honestly just because I didn't want it to be like a video where I was like, you're exposed and I have all the receipts and all the screenshots, and it wasn't intending to be anything like that. It was more so just to share my experience about being involved in the independent Scientology movement and how I got sucked into the world of an individual who totally took advantage and manipulated me over the course of our friendship. Now, this person who I'm speaking about is Karen De La Carrier. If you don't know who Karen is, we're going to be getting into that. We're going to be talking with more details and more information about who this person is, how they took advantage of me. We're gonna be talking about the Outer Banks cult that they run and how they operate, how they take people into that world, how I got sucked in, and how ever since I made that video, how I am now being disconnected from by others in the ex-Scientology world, how this person slandering me, calling me an OSA spy, the Office of Special Affairs, claiming that I am now in or working for the Church of Scientology, I'm being called a fraud, I'm being called a sensationalist, they're digging up other dirt and information on me. And there's a lot more other people who have come forward to share their story with me and I'm going to be telling you guys and showing you some other evidence and information on this person and there's obviously a lot of different claims and other things that are being levied against me and I want to take this time in this video as well to address all of those. There's also going to be a part three video so I have a lot of feelings, a lot of information, other things to share and to clear up and there's just so much to this story guys. There's just a lot of information, other things I'm going to be presenting to you guys. I, like I said, didn't even intend to make this like it was an expose. The last video, like I said, was more so to 
share a story and get it off my chest and move on. And when others found out who this individual is, because I didn't blur out their photo on some of the different screenshots and stuff, I also want to give a couple little hints. I realized I really can't let this person get away with what they did to me and what they're doing to others. Because what happens is when you leave Scientology, you end up in this ex-Scientology movement, more or less of what it is, but it's more dangerous than that. And there's a lot of parallels to being Scientology. It's run and there's censorship and there's so much to how the outer banks and the ex-Scientologists are operating basically like a cult. So you fall into another cult after leaving Scientology and I think that it's really important for others to know so they can steer clear of people like Karen and her husband, Jeffrey Augustine. I've actually filmed this video two other times. One time the footage was really blurry and I couldn't use it. The first time I was just all up in my emotions about it. So I really wanted to take a couple days as well just to see if there'd be fair game levied against me, which there has been. And I wanted to see if Karen would write to me or the aftermath is what we're also going to be talking about is what happened after and since posting my last video. So again, I kind of want to say one thing first, which talks about um, Karen as an auditor. A lot of people are wondering if this was a long time ago or why it took me so long to speak out and is she still auditing? There's a lot of different people saying different things and the ex-Scientology community has basically shunned me out and I pretty much feel speaking out about Karen and in my last video was more difficult than to actually speak out about Scientology. And it was more difficult in order to film my video and to come forward because I knew what I was bound to lose by speaking out about this individual because of how they run and control all of the ex-Scientology narrative. We're gonna be talking about how she used me to release information about Marty Rathbun, and there's just a lot of different things, guys, so just stay tuned. I know that there's different questions and things. I'm gonna to get to them, and we just have to kind of just start somewhere. So with regard to why it took me so long to speak out about this. Now, I was receiving auditing from Karen anywhere from the years 2014, I think I began, or maybe late 2013, and I think one of my last sessions was after I got out of hairdressing school and I was working in the beauty salons and stuff. So that could have been as late as maybe 2016 or 2017 even perhaps was one of my last sessions from Karen. So this wasn't that long ago. And there's others who've since come forward online to share their experiences with Karen. Now, there's an independent Scientology movement and there's different Facebook groups and different things. And someone actually sent me a knowledge report. As you guys know, knowledge reports are when you write up a, another individual inside Scientology, but this is happening in the independent movement when you're trying to write a report on someone and they actually talked about how Karen was auditing someone allegedly on the L's rundown as of September 2019. So I'm gonna show you a little excerpt from that right in here. As you can see here in the knowledge report, it says, Okay, this is Karen De La Carriere, still out there auditing the L's rundown, last known to me to be auditing as of September 2019. Now, I believe that since I went in Karen's mind type three, which is considered going like mentally insane because of my suicide attempts and from my depression, the other things I talked about in my first video. As you can see here, a potential trouble source type three, also known as PTS type three, is defined as a psychotic break. A person suffering a psychotic breakdown due to connection with an anti-Scientologist or psychiatrist, supposedly. Often this label is applied to people who flip under the incredible strain of Scientology's paranoid BS. Talk about how dangerous it is too for her to tell me to refuse medical services and stuff. It was almost like a Lisa McPherson situation. Thank God I'm alive. But I just think that for Karen to be auditing people and people wonder like, well, you know, could she still be doing it? Or like, she's this like big critic and like how, if she's fighting against Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard, how could she still be auditing people? Well, in my estimation, I believe someone like Karen picks and chooses her marks. So for example, I'm just throwing any name out there about critics. This isn't anyone in particular. So let's just say Tori Chrisman. We know Tori Chrisman who's on YouTube, just as Karen is. 
and Karen's getting support from what 20,000 people of her subscribers to go and run auditing sessions on me when I'm suicidal, telling me not to get mental health therapy, all at the while calling L. Ron Hubbard a con man and taking $7,500 from me. I mean, there's like so much more to the story, which is what you guys are here for in part two. But say Tori Christman is like, L. Ron Hubbard's a con man. I don't believe in Scientology, the tech, there's nothing good about it, and I'm free on the outside world. Someone like Tori has said that in a number of her videos. So do you think Karen is actually gonna go and try to audit someone like Tori? Probably not. And if someone like Tori's like, no, screw off Karen, I'm not interested in auditing, Karen may actually get the hint. But if there's other individuals who are new, just leaving Scientology, remember, I was still in the mindset when I left. So when you have someone who's new and who still maybe believes in it, then Karen knows that she can use like her position of being like this class 12 auditor in order to take advantage of these like unsuspecting marks of hers. So if you also look, here's actually an ad that I found of Karen that's running right now in 2020 as of May 6th. Karen's ad claims that she's an LRH trained class 12 CS, crew member among the Apollo, Flag Service Org FSO Class 12 Auditor and CS, and she's an ELS Auditor CS, one of only seven Class 12 CSs ever made. She's a Knots Auditor and CS, Advanced Solo Knots Auditor, and she's a specialist in fixing bog cases and reviews, and she's offering the entire bridge in the independent Scientology movement. So as you can see, Karen has this little ad which says that she does the whole bridge, including the ELS, fixing bog cases and all of that. Now, I think as I was trying to get at with Karen labeling me type three, she's not gonna continue auditing me from that point. So after I ran out of money to pay her and after she saw me being suicidal and having like serious mental things, I wasn't continuously being regged for more auditing from that point forward. But as we can see, there's other people who are coming out saying that they've been audited within the last like few months. And if she wasn't still an auditor, why would she be running ads on sites like Scientologypedia, Free and Able, and other Scientology newsletters? A independent Scientologist by the name of Michael Moore actually runs one of these newsletters. And when others were asking him, hey, is Karen still auditing? This was his response. Michael Moore says, Marcus, I do these newsletters well in advance, and Karen is still a class 12 auditor and audits. Do you know of any reason why she should not be listed? If so, please let me know by PM. Thanks. So as you guys can see, Karen is still auditing through him in order to advertise rather through Michael Moore. So again, there's a lot of different evidence that points in the direction that Karen is still auditing people in 2020. I know a lot of people find it kind of like unbelievable and people have been questioning me and why I just spoke out about it now and it was a while ago perhaps and other things like that. You guys have to realize too, for example, that's almost like equivalating someone who says, oh, why did you come forward with rape? Like. 20, 30 years later, say with Bill Cosby, right? Why would all of a sudden you come out all these years later? You find the strength to come out about something that may be very traumatic and something that you've had to work through and coming to terms with leaving Karen's cult. Again, we're getting to that. And once I realized and got strong enough to be like, hey, I'm gonna speak out against this person, even if they're powerful, even if they control the ex-Scientology news media and so many different things, I felt like, hey, I could help other people by speaking out who are like me or who may have had negative experiences with Karen so they don't feel like, oh, oh my God, if I speak out, then I'm gonna get ostracized from this group of other people. I'm also gonna talk about how I'm not connected to anyone else. Karen's alleging that I'm connecting me to these other ex-Scientologists who are anti-Karen. It has nothing to do about that. It was just that it took a while for me to come to terms with what I went through. And once I saw the full picture of how I was taken advantage of, then I said, hey, it's time that I come forward and speak up about this person. One thing I did wanna to say too, which I feel like this is also a reason why Karen didn't want me to speak out about it. She didn't want me to tell people that I was being audited by her and all these different things. One of the reasons is because she wasn't auditing according to how you should. She was doing very basic auditing errors. For example, when she left to go talk to the cable guy in the middle of the session. That's a big no-no, obviously, because when you're holding the cans and you're in your reactive mind and you're talking about like really painful, triggering things, you're in the middle of the incident. You re-stimulated it. It's called in Scientology, right? So you have to be able to run out that incident before you're able to stop the session. Like you have to get to a good point where you're not 
being traumatized and being and having all of that brought to the surface, right? So instead of saying even before the session, like, hey, you know what, there's a cable guy, like I'm understanding, but again, even when you're in a Scientology session, it's not like a traditional counseling session. So you're not able just to stop in the middle of something very heavy like that. And you see very vividly when your eyes are closed and you're recounting these different experiences, it's very real. So when she goes to leave, talk to the cable guy for 30 minutes and doesn't deduct that from the session fee, I think that that's, again, not only just wrong to charge me for that time, but B, it's not like we even agree to that or anything. Like she just goes off and talks to the cable guy. There are also a whole number of other things, again, if I'm trying to talk about Hubbard and try to reason crazy with crazy, then again, it's just like being back into the Scientology mindset, playing the Scientology games, but there are just many different instances of how Karen wasn't running a proper Scientology auditing session. Now, when Karen was taking this money from me as well, she was, again, there was two different elements like I talked about in the first video, me going and receiving individual therapy services from her and then going to receive the marriage counseling or the marriage therapy, if you will. So again, this was all on the e-meter and she was calling out floating needles and she was delivering a true Scientology auditing session. This wasn't like life coaching. And again, Karen doesn't hold a life coaching certification to my knowledge of any sort of body of people who issue life coaching certifications, right? So again, I don't believe, unless this is somehow changed, but at the time, because my husband asked her like, hey, do you have any professional certifications? And is this something that we can bill to our insurance? And she basically laughed about that and said no, and she's not able to go through insurance. Not like life coaches are able to go through insurance like an actual therapist, but she was putting on the front that she was qualified to be able to deliver marriage therapy to us. Now, if you don't have a professional licensure, just as how I can't on this couch right now go and do stomach surgery on someone, obviously, because I'm not a doctor. If I was impersonating a medical professional, I would go and land myself actually behind bars for that. That's how serious this is. Mental health is just like physical health where it's considered a medical service if you're going to receive mental health therapy. And I can't go in my living room here with the notepad and start to examine someone's mind, whether it's on the e-meter, whether it's not, whether it's just hokey pokey that I develop, I'm not able to go and deliver any type of therapy service going and investigating someone's mind to try to help them with their marriage or whatever it is. So with someone like Karen, by doing this, she's not a therapist. She's not qualified to deliver mental health therapy because unless I'm mistaken, Karen hasn't gotten a master's degree in psychology. She hasn't undergone any type of internship that wasn't on the Hubbard <laughs> um, free wins, for example, an internship actually for therapy that's supervised for 3000 plus hours. And she doesn't hold a marriage and family licensed therapy to be able to offer any type of service like that. As for the requirements to become a marriage and family therapist in California, you of course need a bachelor's degree and then go on to earn a master's degree. And you could also of course go on to receive your PhD if you'd like. The graduate degree program must consist of at least 60 semester hours or 90 quarter units of instruction time. In addition to the educational requirements, a person must also finish a set of training requirements. A licensed applicant must have completed 3,000 hours of experience, which must be super Supervised. This experience must be obtained in no less than 104 weeks. The experience must be obtained within the first six years after graduating from an approved program. So this is going to be reported to the California Department of Health and the California Department of Behavioral Sciences in order to advise them and show them my side of this and so they can begin their investigation. I've advised others who've come forward and talked to me about how they've had Karen audit them to also file a similar report so that she could actually be held accountable in the court of law, be able to go and have to face her time in the court system, I would guess and assume is the next step in order to them 
to determine whether or not she's guilty of having operated in a way without a professional license and have delivered therapy services. I also wanted to show you guys what's called the processing summary form. Karen sends this out to her pre-clears and this is the one that I found that she sent me. I wanted you guys to be able to see the different type of questions that Karen asks and Scientology asks on this form in order to see if you qualify to receive counseling from them. They ask questions such as, have you gone any psychiatrist, psychologist, or other counselor or mental health treatment? List any other practice therapy, spiritualism, or mental activities you have involved in this lifetime. To list any drugs you have taken this lifetime and how frequently about your alcohol and drug usage, if you've ever been arrested, so on and so forth. It's also not under the auspices of the Church of Scientology, which whether you and I agree that it is or isn't a church, doesn't matter, the government still recognizes the Church of Scientology as a church. And I think that's so scary, but they are, and they can deliver spiritual counseling through auditing. Karen isn't protected by the religious protections that Scientology is afforded. So therefore, since she's not in the church, she's not classified under iHelp, which is the governing body in Scientology that actually issues licenses to everyday individuals to practice spiritual counseling under the umbrella of the Church of Scientology. To elaborate and go into more detail for you guys from the Scientology website, what is the International Hubbard Ecclesiastical League of Pastors, iHelp? The International Hubbard Ecclesiastical League of Pastors was created to provide assistance to auditors who minister religious services in the field, which means outside of the actual Church of Scientology, and thus outside organized churches. The International Headquarters for iHelp is located in Los Angeles. It provides planning, consultation, and direction through board campaigns designed to increase the popularity of field auditing and iHelp membership. Karen obviously doesn't have that either, so she's not also able to deliver any type of Scientology counseling outside of Scientology. I believe people should be able to practice their religion and their, they should be able to do what they so please. When I look at this, it's like so twisted to me where her and Jeffrey Augustine, her husband, they stay up till like five in the morning, right? So they have all these computer screens, multiple monitors in their office. So when you go into Karen's house, she's there typing away like this. Jeffrey Augustine's over here on the further end of the computer and he's typing away like this. And they've seen it on their computer where they have all these different browsers. So they have Facebook, they have Twitter, they have ESMB, OSMB, they have all the different Scientology critic websites and anything that they're monitoring, maybe Mike Rinder's blog or whomever. And Google alerts, they're getting Google alerts whenever Scientology is mentioned in the media, they get an alert about that. So they're refreshing and going and as well as on the Outer Banks and all their hate websites and stuff. And they're going typing along 24-7 monitoring any sort of Scientology or anti-Scientology news. They're controlling what's posted in their group. They're getting other people to put out certain messages for them. So we're getting into that, but the point is that at that very point in time, Karen was taking me into session. And why I feel so deceived is that she'd be going on saying how L. Ron Hubbard's a con man, how she's never seen the state of clear before. That's actually like a true state and like all these different things very negative about the technology of Scientology. She sees someone who's at their wit's end in life and saying, hey, come on and come in a session with me, right from that office room, from her computer, waiting an hour for her to finish up typing most of the time, to take me into session and deliver Hubbard auditing commands, calling out floating needles. If you guys don't see what I see about that, then you really have to take a look in the mirror and like see and wonder if you're under the impression of someone like Karen, if you're being controlled in your thoughts. Karen's telling people not to watch my video, I'm a spy, it's all hogwash, and so on and so forth. But again, I have a lot of evidence and I have messages from Karen that show the contrary about her actually auditing me. So let's actually take a look at some of the other screenshots that I got from our DMs that I screenshot before Karen blocked me the other day. We're getting into that as well. And I'm gonna show you guys some other messages of Karen talking about auditing to me. So let's take a look at that. Here's an email where Karen says, Thanks, Steve. Credit card is fine. Prefer to PayPal. XOXOXO. And here begins the Facebook direct messages. She goes, Dear Steve, even though I do not normally do lower bridge, I would make an exception for you. I kind of like the idea of taking you under my wing. My fees are expensive, but I am top of the line and have earned the expertise I have. I said, see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. She goes, you are a very rare PC. Hardly ever to class 12s do lower bridge. One of a kind. He he. 
Some of these aren't in exact order, but just so you guys know. She said, let me help you spiritually on the more draconian incidents within the church. I'm a wizard at that. No charge for you. We can work it out. Reschedule. I said, that sounds great. She goes, this week I am deluged, working with lawyers, but I will be in touch as soon as my head comes up for air. I said, no problem, XO. And she goes, hugs. She said, I program you best. I need that form I sent you with the probing questions answered. Tomorrow would like to start at 3 p.m. I said, I sent the processing form over for you. 3 p.m. is perfect. She goes, we are all set to go. Very well done on the form. You are very thorough and articulate. Good job, Steve. Welcome to your bridge. 3 p.m. it is. She goes, thanks, Steve. This is wonderful that you made it happen. I want to take you beyond grade four. Let's see if I can get in power as well. But I have someone flying in from thousands of miles away today for four days. Wow, I am excited I could take you higher. She said, this could be a very heavy session. It's unlikely I will get a metab at 12.45 a.m. I prefer tomorrow. Steve, these are wrong items. You do not have to accept them. He is talking out of his own bank in pain, etc. It's not even him talking necessarily. The bank. This was in regards to the marriage counseling. And then after I finished one of my grades, she said, let me know when you want to come in and finish the attest cycle. I said, we'll do. Monday evening should work. She goes, excellent. You still have time to get going on the next level. Let's have you in such fine shape that you can win in all areas. Money. Is everything okay? Do not hear from you. She said, is everything okay? I have some days available to get you through life repair and grade zero easily. She goes, yes, I hear you. The only thing you can do is to postulate an unexpected windfall. This is when I said that I was low on money and I was struggling and I was suicidal and all these different things. And again, she would advise me not to get mental health therapy and would say no practitioner will move you upward. In fact, they could undo the good I did. Again, trying to throw different mind control games out there to stop me from getting actual mental health therapy and to continue to pay her. She told me to tell my husband, simply state that you are going to stick with me. You will make it work out sooner or later. You are an actor. You can get a series and the whole thing could change overnight. Tell him you're just not going to settle for anyone less than me. And you're going to make it happen. Perhaps better not to lock horns right now. She said, remember the little homework I gave you. Spot intentions and counter intentions. Even if there are no counter intentions, spot the intention. I'm coaching you to sharpen your theta perceptics. I said, XOXO, I'm on it. She goes, hugs. She said on one post that I made in regard to that, she said, Steve, I'm sorry you were feeling sick, but don't give Osa a win. You were in the spotlight and Osa does not need to know that you are now sick. Not a good idea. Just coaching. Again, Karen telling me what to post, what I couldn't post, not to let Osa see that I wasn't feeling well and I was sick and I posted on my Facebook page. And she again was coaching me on what to say. I said, hey, Karen, my page is very private. I'm only friends with people I know. After Karen chewed my head off for posting on Facebook that I was receiving some form of help from her, I said, hey, Karen, just got your voicemail, the one that she screamed my head off. And I said, sorry to post the status. I try to make it general, but totally get keeping things on the DL. Sorry again. But thanks so much for helping me. One session, I already feel so amazing. I can see now the truth of everything much more clearly. She goes, very good, dear. You did very well. Be cautious not to answer any question on how I helped you. Do not engage in further data on the subject. Now, I feel Karen needs to be responsible and accountable for this behavior which she can't be because the second I posted my last video she blocked me instantly as her husband did on all social media on every single platform I am completely exiled from the world of Karen in all the ex Scientology Facebook groups I have now been banned from as you can see here from Twitter Karen and her husband Jeffrey Augustine both blocked me on Twitter as well as on all other social medias after I spoke out in my last video without doing the right thing by me without offering a refund without taking accountability for her actions and for not actually doing right by me and other that she's wronged over the years. So other individuals have also been contacted, other ex-Scientologists and critics, and they're being advised to actually unfriend me and disconnection as well and alive. So I'm gonna show you a list of a couple different people who have actually listened to Karen and unfriended me because of my last video. So let's take a look. I have an app called Who Deleted You that tells you who unfriended you on Facebook. And when you're being disconnected from, it comes in handy. So the first person's Becky Bigelow, which is Ron Miscavige's wife. We have Donald Myers, which is the angry gay pope. We have obviously Karen and Jeffrey. And we have Karen Presley, who is a whistleblower herself. And I got into a whole entire thing with Karen Presley, which we're going to be talking about in part three. We have Mark Headley. We have Rod Keller and Sarah Manning, all involved with Karen and the critic movement. Now, this is the problem that I have. If you're a critic of Scientology 
and you're attacking L. Ron Hubbard, but taking people in a session, and then you run your own group where you censor people, you tell them what to post, what not to post, who to be friends with, you have closed door briefings, just like they do in Scientology, and you control how people think, do, behave, act, like everything about people tell me, I can post this, don't post this, don't say that, don't post about your mental health, don't, like all these different things. And then you tell people, disconnect from this person, we can talk to this person, that one's an enemy. You might as well just join Scientology, like don't go championing as if like you're this big hero critic and then going and doing exactly what Scientology does. You might as well just rejoin Scientology and do your ADE steps and become a Scientologist again. It's just very silly to me that she still continues to behave and operate like they do in Scientology. Now, I do want to say too that I am sympathetic and I'm empathetic to an individual who, or anyone who's been in Scientology, especially as long as someone like Karen, she was in the Sea Org to like 1990, 91, I think is when she left. So like before I was born, and then she was a public member all the way up until 2010 and then she left. So she was still a public member for about 20 years or something, I would guess. But regardless of if she was C or not C or doesn't matter, like what she went through with her son and just various things, I could have empathy for someone. But if you're doing wrong by others, if you are still taking money from people and auditing them and telling them not to get mental health services and even if I'm suicidal to go into session with her and pinning me against my husband so we can try to get $10,000 for Karen and just all of these different things. Heron probably doesn't understand why I did what I did, but it's important for me to have my voice and to speak out and to warn others about her behavior so they can steer clear, so she can now wonder, every single time someone writes her for auditing, she can think, hey, I wonder if that's Steve Mango right now, and she can say no out of fear to audit anyone else, so she doesn't take control of anyone else's mind and offers auditing while calling Hubbard economy. I just wanted to add in a little extra commentary here and say that this is someone, as I've been trying to point out, is practicing Scientology while being very hypocritical by coming out against Scientology and against L. Ron Hubbard and how she'll then go and take someone into session while calling herself a critic. And instead of doing the right thing by me, she goes and she's auditing me and telling me to get money out of my husband and she is doing all the same tactics as Scientology. Later in the video, we are talking about the disconnection and the fair game and the private investigators and everything that goes on in Karen and Jeffrey's world. But this is someone that was very suicidal, being myself, someone who needed actual medical help from overdosing. And Karen is using Scientology's technology outside the church to advise me not to get actual help and to continue to pay her for auditing and other services. So that's really why I'm speaking out about this. And I think that besides just not practicing without a license and all the other things that Karen is doing, she's still practicing Scientology and operating her own cult in a lot of different ways. And I just think it's crazy that she continues to get away with doing this. There's like so much to it, guys. And I just think it's very important that I share this on my channel. She's claiming that I might be in cahoots with my last video with Corey Andrews. Corey Andrews is a never end guy and he runs like this blog where he actually exposes conversations he's had with Karen, with Karen Presley, who's another critic, and Mike Rinder, and just others to kind of point out their hypocrisy. It's very interesting. I'm going to link down his blog down below. And there's Alonzo, and Alonzo's blog is a blog that's been running, I'm not sure how long, but I know for at least 10 years he's had issues with Karen. Karen told me you know, all she would talk about is Alonzo this, Alonzo that. And it's almost like when you have like a crazy grandparent and they tell you Civil War stories and stuff and you just kind of smile and nod and just hope that they stop talking. Because again, like I just never liked someone telling me what to believe, what not to believe, what to think. Is this person a secret Scientology spy, whatever. Like I like to come and draw my own conclusions as a free, independent young man. Like that's what I pride myself on. It's not being in a cult and not letting someone tell me what to think. Or believe so she would always talk about these people and I was still truly in the mindset until recently until I saw like wow like these people actually are just saying the truth about Karen and she had to try to justify that there are all these evil people now before I made my video I didn't really know much about them other than being told that they were like these bad people but never talked to them didn't join the Facebook group that I'm being, you know, I joined later on. But again, I was being told like, oh, he's in the Facebook group. He must be working with them. Again, I'm not working with anyone. These are my thoughts. 
and these are my feelings, my observations, and my personal experiences, and I'm not like these other ex-Scientologists that like to operate under cult-like circumstances. I'm not working in a group, in a pack to, like, we're going to come against this person, we have to say this, and put out this information. I don't operate like my life like this, guys. I really don't. I put out the video because it was my own experience. If I wanted to call out Karen, I would have said her name in the first video and put her name in the, in the title. A lot of people even didn't even really know that it was about her until, unless they were smart enough to follow all these different things. But again, I wasn't in cahoots with anyone. It took me a while to come out because I was honestly just scared to tell my experience to be judged for receiving auditing in the independent movement to talk about the suicidal thoughts and stuff I had. It's not easy to come on camera and be this honest and vulnerable. However, you guys know if you've been following me over the years, for the last six years, I talk about everything. I share and overshare everything about my life, who I am, what I'm about. I'm very much a open person in an open book because that's what I pride myself on. And I think you guys who follow me know who I am, what I'm about, and would know that I'm just not going to come on camera because someone told me to say something and to, you know, pin against Karen De La Carrier because a couple other people have an axe to grind with her. It doesn't matter if she was a Mormon, a Catholic, an ex-Scientologist, the pizza delivery guy. And you guys know too, with my Mango Tea channel, I do videos where I expose beauty influencers and I talk about problems in the beauty community. I made videos about Jacqueline Hill, who was a cosmetics company and it was found that she had an unsanitary lab and there was mold spores on her lipsticks and she had little fuzzy hairs on the cosmetics and just very disgusting conditions that were found in her cosmetics lab. So what did I do? I came on camera and exposed that. And even if it's someone that I enjoy watching, I might enjoy her content, but again, that doesn't mean I'm not going to go and speak out against this individual. Again, if someone rips me off for money on the street and I catch them in a cell phone video, I might put that out on my channel. Other people may not handle things as publicly and vocally as I do. And I understand people might see my videos a little bit more aggressive and, oh, she's still a critic. And yeah, she may have done good work in exposing Scientology, but say she goes and stabs someone. Am I, as a reporter, not going to go and talk about how she did that? Are we supposed to brush that under the rug? So I don't understand this idea with all these ex-Scientologists saying, you're a critic attacking critic, and Stephen Mango's coming for a critic and attacking critics. That line is so tired and so oversaid and done in the ex-Scientology community. Just because someone else is a critic doesn't mean they're immune to criticism. Again, like I said, it doesn't matter if she's the head honcho of the ex-Scientologist or not. Again, I threw away a whole friendship with this person in order to speak up and do the right thing because of things I've even observed, which we're going to be speaking on, which I just find completely wrong. And I'm not going to let someone get away with that. They're going to be accountable for their behavior. Now, a lot of people are like, hey, like, why didn't you go and just send her a direct message and say like, hey, like, what can we do to make this right? Or how can we come to a resolution with this matter? And to that, I say, it's like if you have an abusive spouse or you're in an encounter with a narcissist, and I believe she is, and I believe she's also a sociopath in my estimation, not a clinical judgment, just from the signs that I've observed. But if you talk to someone like that, what are you going to get? More gaslighting, more abuse, more manipulation, more back channel conversations. And she wouldn't have taken it seriously. By me actually making this video, I'm putting it very publicly to warn others and to also tell my story because now she's able to actually see and have a spotlight on this behavior by lots of other people that she has to now answer to to say, is she still auditing? Is she not? What's the truth? And now her behavior is being shown in the spotlight. And I think that I did the right thing by doing that, even if it was difficult. And even though I've been taking a lot of different hits and suffering the consequences, and I will be for a very long time, her husband, Jeffrey Augustine as well, has a private investigator license, it's been found. From California's Bureau of Security and Investigative Services, it's been discovered that Jeffrey Augustine is actually a licensed private investigator. As Karen and Jeffrey go and speak out about how Scientology sends out private investigators to follow critics like themselves, Jeffrey Augustine became a private investigator himself so he can go and run his own fair game tactics against others who speak out about Karen and Jeffrey. It is so mind-boggling. 
boggling to me. She actually had a private investigator actually in her home for a lot of the times I was there and she has these security cameras and stuff like right at her front door um, of different like um, screens essentially so she looks and they watch the cars drive by and stuff like that but the investigator works with Karen and Jeffrey so that's very scary to think that they are again being like Scientology's OSA. What does OSA do? They investigate, they slime, they slander people and it's not right that they are doing this against someone who's honestly if you watch my video is heartfelt and they're being told like oh it's in theta and telling other ex-members it's it's an attack it was an attack i came on camera and i shared my story from the moment i met karen until our falling out essentially right so this isn't like i was saying like mean things it was honestly my experience with this person so again Bill Cosby might have made a lot of people smile and laugh on television over the years, but when it came out that he was a rapist and ends up in federal prison, I mean, are we going to say, oh, well, he was a great person for a while. Well, he did a lot of wrong too, and I think that's very important to call that out. Now, I don't know if Karen's going to land herself behind bars for operating without a professional license, but again, it's a very real thing, and I think that's honestly why she didn't want me to speak up about this and to showcase the hypocrisy of her doing this. I also want to share with you guys some of the other YouTube comments I've been getting that are very, very disgusting and disturbing of others who've been talking and speaking up about Scientology. Other critics that you guys are probably familiar with and to read some of those and then talk to you guys about the cults that Karen is running and why I have been in fear since speaking out. So first, let's show you guys some other people's stories and experience with Karen. From Gerard Waterkamp, Karen De La Courier is the most despicable person I had the dubious pleasure to meet in my life. Manipulative, underhanded, self-serving, and completely scrupulous without empathy. This does not even start to describe it. Mike Rinder for a long time seemed to have missed recognizing her true character. I spent six months with her and saw the abyss of what is her inner core. For your own sanity, stay far away from her as you can. From a user by the name of Raina0240, Karen and Jeffrey are even worse than the cult, in my opinion. These evil a-holes actually try to rope in the most vulnerable people like myself who just woke up from the cult and lost everything overnight. That bee invited me to her yearly dinner gathering of exes, and I sussed Karen and her husband were shady people. Since then, I've spoken out on these pricks, and I'm happy to see their BS con getting more and more exposure. There are other exes like them. They aren't the only ones. You have to be a special kind of connection to Satan to do what K and J do. It's ridiculous and cruel to the bone. You can take the Scientologist out of the cult, but you can't take the cult member out of Scientology. A man by Music Man says, Independent Scientologists are effectively psychotherapists operating without a license and should be shut down. They are not a religion under federal law. And Rawlett S. said, That's absolutely horrible, Stephen. She veered a suicidal person away from true mental health services, so she could profit from you instead. That's sickening. There's not a dedicated place in this video to tell this story, so very quickly I wanted to say that I had a friend who is a second generation Scientologist who came with me to one of Karen's parties and who was invited to join Karen's Outer Banks group. Karen went in her group and introduced her with her photograph, knowing that Scientology's Office of Special Affairs is in that group, and knowing that this person asked Karen specifically not to tell her story, not to actually even say anything about her involvement, in the critic or ex-Scientology world because this person is being disconnected from by her family and her family was saying, hey, if you speak out about Scientology or join up with others like Karen De La Carrier, then we're not going to talk to you. And this person obviously wanted to stay in touch with her family, so she told Karen not to mention her in the group. And what did Karen do? Go around and make a post welcoming this person and telling her story without her permission in Karen's group for Karen's own ego or for profit. All of Karen narcissistic reasons. So this person had to contact Karen and say, hey, take the post down. I didn't give you authorization to do this. And it just goes to show you that this is actually not even the only experience, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I know many other people, Karen actually goes in her cult-like groups and she posts photos of others from their private Facebook group of like their family or their children. And Karen uses stories of childhood auditing sexual abuse and other things to promote inside of her groups. And it's just completely sickening that she does this while she's also going and auditing someone like me behind closed doors while she's mentioning auditing abuse stories. It's, again, like I said, mind-boggling. 
So now that you guys can see, I'm not the only one who's had a problem with Karen in the ex-Scientology world. I just wanted to give some honest criticism of the ex-Scientology community and how Karen runs and manipulates and controls the ex-Scientology world. So Karen, as you guys know, runs a secret Facebook group called The Outer Banks. Now, when I first left Scientology, again, I was like so distraught, I was so hurt, and I didn't understand what I was going through, and it was just a lot for me to handle. Now, yes, yeah, should I have gone to see a therapist to handle these different things? Yes, but my now husband, but my boyfriend at the time, Jeff, wanted me to possibly speak to another Scientologist, or former Scientologist rather, who has been out of the church and could help kind of speak the same language with me, if that makes any sense. Because yes, I could have called my friend Juliana, I'd call my friend Paige or someone, and I could be like, hey Juliana, do you know like Inside Scientology, it's so crazy because when they were releasing the basic books and they started to omit different things that Hubbard said in the golden age of tech and you know the golden age of knowledge and you know, all this is going against HCOB policy letter April 22nd, 1958. Friends would be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like even Jeff, like it's taken what, eight years of being in a relationship with him for him to even like grasp some of the basic tenets and ideas and to really understand what I went through. So I really wanted to talk to someone who understood my experience and what I went through and who may be in a position to kind of help me reason and justify that I made the right decision to leave Scientology and my observations were true and just to have like that support system, that community. So my husband actually played poker with an investigative journalist who you guys may know of as Mark Ebner and he is a friend of Jeff and he used Mark Ebner to vouch for Jeff in order to tell Karen like, hey, Jeff and his husband Steve aren't Scientology, they aren't spies, you can talk to him. His husband or his boyfriend rather just left Scientology. Can you take some time to talk to Jeff and Steve? So Ebner did that to Karen and then Karen came over our house and that's when Karen was very heavily pressuring me to speak out and make a video on her YouTube channel. It'll get 7,000 views in a week, she promised. From a DM from before I spoke out about Scientology, Karen said, Steve, you have a wonderful demeanor and presence. You could get 7,000 views in one week of what you say. Can we ask you to consider a couple of five minute shoots? You have no idea how this can impact. I have a heartbroken mother whose two teens joined Celebrity Center Sea Org. If I had a video to send people who are about to lose their kids of the predatory redging and actuality of what goes on in the Sea Org, people's lives could take a different turn. Our turn to buy you dinner, not depending on your decision. I spoke to Karen and I said, recently I've been having what I think is PTSD. I just have been kind of traumatized recently from my experience in the church, even though I've been out now for almost a year. Is that normal? I just will have a crazy flashback, for example, to an intense recruitment or regging cycle and it's scary. I may consider a video at some point, really. I just need a little bit more time to come to a happier place with things. I do see how it can help people, so that's why I'm not ruling the idea out. I feel that I can help actors and other entertainment types from being sucked into their trap. Meanwhile, later on, now I'm almost at 3 million views on that very video, so I decided to take control of my own story later on because I wanted to tell my story and not let someone else tell it for me, or if I decided not to put out the video anymore, I didn't like sign off a release to let someone else tell my story and profit off of that on their YouTube channel. So Karen and I spoke, and what happens is she takes you under her motherly wing and she love bombs you just like they do in Scientology, telling you how amazing, how special, how talented, and feeding you all the compliments in the world and offering protection. Now this happens to other people who leave Scientology and end up in the hands of someone who is like Karen or who belongs to the Outer Banks, but more specifically Karen we're talking about in this video. And that's why this is a warning and this is my video to help other people avoid and steer clear of Karen. Now she takes you up under the wing and then she offers again to audit you and to help you understand at the time in one of the beginning sessions she does in order to kind of hypnotize you in a way is to say like hey it's not the technology of Scientology it's David Miscavige and the abuse and the corruption so then you realize like oh auditing really isn't all that bad so then you decide to go into session and continue on where you left off in Scientology or to help you now, I didn't initially, like I said, go right into session with Karen. It was after she found me in a very rough spot when my dog died to say, hey, let me take you into session to help you. Now, this is 
again, where the abuse and I feel it's manipulative and I feel it's disgusting and taking advantage of someone when they're at a very low point in their life and you use that in order to line your own pockets. If she even wanted to help me as an auditor for free. She, I was basically unable to even afford a taco at this point. And she's advising instead of say, you know, paying off credit cards or doing stuff like that was to continue to purchase auditing from her. Now, given the state that I was in, I think that, yeah, if you were, even were an auditor, maybe if I was like a friend or someone you cared about, if I wasn't just a dollar bill, you would try to help me complimentary or maybe give me a little bit of auditing or like whatever it is, if you were really trying to genuinely help me instead of enrich yourself. And that wasn't the case. She would make me put money on PayPal and send it to her on credit cards and put myself in even more debt at the promise of being able to help me better my life with these sessions. And I trusted because she was outside the church that it wasn't going to be run in the same manner. I was under the impression that she genuinely wanted to help me instead of just like, okay, let's see what suppressive person's in your life or just like typical Scientology hogwash that obviously isn't going to help me be able to better my life outside of the church. And when I'm so broken, I'm at my lowest point, and here she comes in when I'm suicidal, telling me not to see a therapist because they have bad stats and don't receive any mental health counseling. will actually undo the good that she did, is in her words, you can see that in the last video of the screenshots where she talked about that, and not to receive mental health help. Now, again, I feel like this is very fraudulent. I believe she committed malpractice with auditing me without any sort of professional certification, calling it therapy, even when she met with my husband and I for marriage counseling. We didn't go for the whole $10,000 session, but she did meet with us and offer marriage therapy. So again, it's malpractice, and this is a very serious thing that I don't take lightly when I talk about these different crimes of hers. It's Again, now that I'm a stronger, more independent person, I could talk about this because I'm now free from the effects of Karen and I've had a long time to kind of reflect if I want to talk about this. And as more comes out about Karen, I realize this was the right thing to do. So when I'm overdosing and she's liking Facebook posts and she's not contacting my husband or she's not contacting emergency services or anything like that, and she's telling me not to seek medical help, for the overdose incident, I think, and that would be in regards to seeing a psychiatrist or doing anything that would actually help me, I think, again, that is severely dangerous to someone who actually does need that because it is medical services. Now, when you're telling someone in a state who is suicidal that they need more auditing and to pay you so you can make more money off of that person and then to give really dangerous ideas based off of Hubbard and Hubbard's beliefs to not seek medical care in these type of instances and stuff. I could have very well been the Lisa McPherson. And again, it's, I don't really like to have to account or try to rather compare myself to a tragedy like Lisa McPherson. But you have to think if and when I was so suicidal, what if I died and I was under her care? You know what I mean? What if I was the Lisa McPherson of the independent Scientology community? What would she have done at that case? Would she, again, just keep brushing it under the rug? Or like what would actually have happened in that matter? So that's why it's so dangerous for her to continue to call herself any type of counselor when she's not trained to be able to help someone in these very dark, scary incidences in their life. So that's why I really did decide that this was something that I needed to blow the whistle on because even though other people are saying I'm a critic attacking a critic, I was in the lowest point of my life. And someone like Lisa McPherson was, again, instead of receiving actual help, she was put through the introspection rundown. They locked her in a room and she ended up having cockroach bites all over her body. She was severely dehydrated. And when she was unconscious, instead of going to the close by Morgan Plain Hospital in Clearwater, they drove another 45 minutes to make sure she saw a Scientology doctor. So again, to keep her under that control. And then she ended up dead on arrival. So again, this is how Scientology, and these are the things you would think that she would be speaking up against someone like Karen, right? And instead of others in the ex-Scientology world being able to hear what I have to say and look at both sides, 
and being able to hear what I have to say instead of just branding it as critics attacking critics, someone like Ron Miscavige had her on his YouTube channel just a day or two ago. And a lot of people were asking Ron to comment on the Mangotology video that I made about Karen. So this is what Ron Miscavige had to say. From Ron Miscavige's channel, someone said basically, if we start infighting among ourselves, then the only winner will be Scientology. Ron Miscavige said, you are correct. Someone said, Stephen Mango's recent Karen bash. Thoughts? Ron Miscavige said, I wouldn't bash. It's rude and uncalled for. A commenter by the name of New York City Girl was talking about my video and what was going on and asking Ron for his opinion. And Ron Miscavige said, Hey, New York City Girl, this is Ron's wife, Becky. If you would like to take on Mango, you're more than welcome to. I will be removing him from all of Ron's sites. Practicing disconnection. If he wishes publicly, he can do it on his own. He has a YouTube channel, referring to me. His experiences are his experiences. I wish nothing of his criticisms to come across my husband's lines, meaning that that the wife is removing anything before Ron Miscavige can even see it, again trying to hide my truth from Ron. There are many things that I'm sure, being outside of Scientology, you do not understand, and I can understand that. I feel for your concerns because your heart is in the right place. Best regards, Becky. So this is what I have to say to Ron Miscavige. Ron, were you in the auditing sessions with Karen and I? Were you actually there? Do you even know me? Have you ever even met me? I've known Karen for seven years. These aren't just like me saying, I dislike Karen because of her wig that she has on or like whatever it is. I don't like her clothing choices. That could again, just be like mean comments that you would say to an individual. But when this comes to how I was manipulated by and put under control by a toxic individual, and this is something that is, again, very serious. And you're going to say you're not even going to watch my video and Karen's a good person. Yeah, just because she speaks up about Scientology doesn't mean that she hasn't been engaging in hypocritical behavior and actually took money from someone in a suicidal point in their life in order to better her situation, I guess. So again, Ron, you weren't there. And this is someone who Karen, to Ron Miscavige, years ago, try to pay off Marty Rathbun to make a blog post calling Ron Miscavige a rapist. From Marty Rathbun's blog, a very quick excerpt, he said, Here's where the hypocrisy enters. A few years ago, Karen offered me thousands of dollars to indict and convict Ron Miscavige of that very rape charge on my blog. She said that Ron had confessed the crime to her in Clearwater, Florida in the 80s, and she wanted to publish it. She said it was fair game for the publication because even though Karen was a Scientology counselor at the Clearwater f facility at the time of the confession, Ron had admitted the crime outside the four walls of a counseling session. She said that Ron told her, Karen, I don't know what got into me. I lost my mind. I got rough with that girl. I raped her. Referring to the woman outside Philadelphia who had so accused him, she referred to Ron Miscavige as a predator who needed to be put away for the protection of society. I told Karen that rape is a serious charge for he said, she said accusation, and I would not be taking the subject up. Karen pressed me with a plea that it would do all manner of harm to David Miscavige in Scientology. Karen tries to use her financial state and her money. People said, even said recently, like, oh, maybe her art business is like some sort of money laundering thing. And there's like all these different things. And again, we can look at that in part three. But basically, she has money where she can pay people in order to do her bidding or to be on her side. The other very alarming thing that happens too is Karen has said that she wants to have the most footprints, she wants to have the most clicks, the most likes, and she wants to have the biggest audience in order to control. And, and we're talking about in the ex-Scientology or anti-Scientology community. So again, what Karen does is she gets people in her Facebook groups and what happens is there's a lot of censorship in her Facebook groups, she tells people what to say and what to post, what not to post to edit things, and it all has to be in alignment with what she believes. A very good example of this is, for example, the Reckless Ben series. I disagreed with Reckless Ben with how they went in with the spy glasses because I feel like they were opening themselves up to legal liability. Scientology has so much money they could sue you a hundred times over. They can engage in litigation, as well as California is a two-party consent state, so they can have criminal charges on them for filming undercover. They didn't blur anyone's face out. They did get in trouble, like I predicted, with Scientology, so I disagreed with their series. Now, Karen was pumping them up and praising them, and everyone else was giving praise. Because I did not, I got muted from 
her Outer Banks group. So again, like I was saying, over the course of many weeks, months, even years, I haven't seen Karen in two years, I would say, I didn't accept one of her apologies when she was like screaming my head off on the phone once and I didn't go to, or haven't been invited to her little Outer Banks parties in Glendale and stuff like that. So I've been distant for a very long time and she knows that. So again, it's taken me this amount of time to speak up, but just like Scientology. They were flabbergasted in Scientology that I made my video exposing Scientology. I was on the posters, think about that, calling myself a lifetime Scientologist and like two weeks later, um, speaking out and making my video about Scientology. So again, there's never a right or wrong time. There's not some sort of ulterior motive of why I posted it now, why I didn't post it then. It's because like when Karen invited me into this Outer Banks world, she made me feel safe and protected. And she was again, and along with many others, have made me feel like I was part of something. When you leave the cult, you don't have friends, you don't have family, you've been disconnected from, you're in a very low place in your life. So when you have someone like Karen, you know, welcoming and roping you in, it's very alluring to a new person out of the cult. And since someone in the cult has just recently probably left or who maybe have been in the cult for a very long time, they don't really often see the warning signs of another narcissistic or powerful person that can take control of your mind in a very similar way. So when I'm in these groups and I'm going to these dinners and even if I am being controlled and other things were going on over the years, I just felt like if I spoke out and then I got disconnected from by all these different people, then I wouldn't have anyone. I still really don't have friends and other people. So you guys can see like someone like me is prime picking for someone like Karen. If there's someone like a Tori Christman who doesn't believe in independent Scientology, yeah, Karen's probably not gonna try to rope her into doing auditing. It's really like on a case by case basis and even though it is case by case, she still advertises publicly to anyone who does seek her out for auditing sessions or whatever she may so choose. So now that I spoke out, and I guess I also wanted to say, now that I remembered about it too, with Jeffrey Augustine, her husband, again, since Karen is like the queen bee, no one could come for her or else she attacks them, but it's also critics attacking critics. Jeffrey Augustine, like I said, he has some private investigator license, which is very weird, but also he wrote this book. It was called like, Whatever Happened to the Big Bang? And in the description of the book, I haven't read it, but you guys can see it if you just look it up on Amazon, it says that Jeffrey Augustine received a massive download from Infinity, which now he understands what really happened to the Big Bang in that situation. One day on a drive into the mountains, Augustine was hit with a bolt out of the blue. He had a staggering insight about the event that caused the Big Bang and its implications for human consciousness. Augustine had what he described as a massive download from infinity, wherein he saw everything. It took a long time to unfold this download and put it into a book form. Along the way, Augustine became a master mason and a knight templar. He's claiming the universe boom into him and now he has like all this infinite wisdom of what actually happened to the Big Bang. So as a critic like myself, I can't say anything about his book because it would be criticizing someone who does like good work coming for the um, David Miscavige and cult of Scientology. It makes no sense. Why can't I, as a free thinker, being able to analyze something such as that for myself and being able to call him out for that? I think that if you are gonna claim that you have some sort of eternal wisdom, and that's BS, that you should be able to account for that and I should be able to call it out if I see a problem with that. Jeffrey Augustine is also in the Freemason secret society or whatever the Freemasons are. I don't really know. But I just know that he operates in a very cult-like matter with Karen because I remember even seeing with that Alonzo guy I mentioned, they, I think I was on set maybe for a background job and I was reading ESMB, the ex Scientologist message board, and they were talking about Jeffrey and about Karen. I think that they took over Karen and Jeffrey, the OCMB blog, because they wanted to delete certain posts that were negative about Jeffrey Augustine and Karen. So they actually put money allegedly into this blog just so they can delete anything critical or negative about them. Because again, they need to control the whole entire internet they want to in order to be able to not have anything negative about them on the internet. And to be able to continue to rope people into their cult-like groups. It's just very, very sick how these people are. But what I saw that it's also very alarming was I'm on Twitter and I'm seeing Jeffrey Augustine start to slander Alonzo and starting to fair game him, releasing information about his bankruptcy and all these different things. Jeffrey Augustine in a fair game attack on Alonzo's blog said, 
Alan, you went bankrupt in 2019 on $55,000 in credit card debt. It's a tough economy, old boy. You have to keep a roof over your head and pay for health care. Who's paying your bills? All the work I see you doing is Osafir Game on Twitter. The dots are easy to connect here, Karen said. Hashtag Scientology. Alonzo, who is Alan T. Stanfield of Illinois, doxing his identity, does not work, but sits at computer to cause hate and chaos. Now he is penniless and bankrupt. He ripped off $55,000 and got off the hook by declaring bankruptcy. Stealing is okay per Alonzo, but generosity is devious. LOL. She then goes to tag other Scientology critics, and she said, Instead of giving endless donations to the cult, I think it's a good thing to help those that the cult harmed. I was just sitting there like, oh my god, am I just not going to ever say anything about these people that are operating just like Scientology outside of the cult? And Karen and Jeffrey always like to do that, just like Scientology does, digging up dirt, this, to try to discredit and make the person look bad, that they file bankruptcy or they have sex crimes and different things, which they try to say about me through Karen Presley, but again, that's probably for part three. This video is already way too long, but they start to say all these things, which in the everyday world, yeah, people file bankruptcy. Two people, they're gonna sleep together. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't necessarily mean like that's like the way to discredit another person. And it's just so disgusting that they start operating. If you step out of line with them or you, you know, present any type of criticism, that's what they do. They censor people too. Even like my friend Nasty Nathaniel, he sent this to me and gave me permission to talk about it where he posted in Karen's Outer Banks group about wanting the security guard at Scientology he has a crush on and saying he wants a security guard to shoot him with his love gun because the Scientology guards now have firearms, which is again very alarming. They could shoot someone like me or Nasty Nathaniel. But N Nasty Nathaniel was joking around saying, well, I want him to shoot me with his love gun. So Karen actually muted him or told him to delete the post. And I'll read you what he said. And he's like, hey, Karen, I'm not going to delete the post. I'm my own free person. Like, I got to say what I want to say. So this is Nasty Nathaniel's response to Karen. Karen said in a direct message to Nasty Nathaniel, Please edit out Love Gun from your last post because it is offensive to certain members. The rest of the post is good and informative, Nasty Nathaniel said. Howdy, Karen. How are you doing? Here's how I feel about what you asked, and I told Rod Keller the same thing, and he agreed with me. No matter what myself or anyone else posts in the Outer Banks, or any of the other Scientology groups for that matter, there are always going to be certain people that are going to take offense to something. If I edited a post every time somebody took offense to something, I would never be able to post anything. So I'm not going to edit the post. If somebody's going to get worked up over the words love gun, which is actually a song title, then maybe they shouldn't be on social media in the first place. I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel, Karen. I hope you understand my views on this. Thank you. Nasty Nathaniel put it beautifully, and this is exactly how other conversations go between Karen and other critics or whistleblowers on Scientology that join the Outer Banks. Karen basically tells you what to post, how to word it, what to say, and just has you slap your name on the post when Karen basically dictated exactly how the post should look to begin with. I fully agree. Why? Just because if you have a difference of opinion, you say something she just disagrees with, that you have to remove the post or whatever. Now with Marty Rathbun, I was on set and I worked with Marty Rathbun for the BBC's production of my Scientology movie. And Karen at the time was in a disagreement, I believe, with Marty because of Marty basically had a whole history. Karen was financially giving um, donations to Marty, thousands of dollars worth. She even gave him a Platinum American Express card to be able to charge to his, um, you know, free will of whatever he needed to buy. And she was being like a sugar mama to Marty Rathbun. When they had a falling out, whatever, Karen, again, instead of confronting someone, she uses other people to do her dirty work, which again, I was chosen. So instead of like, again, with Karen, she blocks me, whatever. And think of how cold and callous that is. Like, this is someone who's supposed to be like my life coach, my counselor, someone who's supposed to help me through life. And instead of like, if it was me, I'd be mortified if I was her, like, oh my God, I hurt his feelings or wow, this is someone that I really truly care about as like a counselor or whatever she wants to call herself, an auditor. Oh, like maybe now that I'm out of the cult a little bit longer, I could see what I did to this poor person. Maybe I'll offer him a refund or maybe I'll try to make it up to him or do something because like if he had to speak about this video, like he must have been really hurt and why did I do what I did and maybe open her eyes to say like, I'm kind of operating like Scientology. Like I can't believe like what I did and I took from this kid when I'm a millionaire, when he was at his lowest point, like on, you know, the hospital bed essentially and here I am like being greedy with trying to take from a very young vulnerable individual such as myself. 
So instead of thinking that, she just boom, blocks. Because all these other Scientology executives from Intbase or just like these higher up people that were in management or whatever, it's like they audited out those people's empathy. They're like soldiers and they have to be able to do like the, the best for the highest number of dynamics, right? Like they have to do the ever is best for the overall picture for Scientology, even if it's like a great detriment to your own personal self. And that's for any Scientologist really to say that, but with Karen, you know, she wasn't able to look at her behavior and her actions, but with Marty, like I was just getting at the story, I was, again, I worked with Marty, so I feel like she saw an opportunity to be like, hey, since he has a personal experience with Marty, he can go and release all this information with Marty's home deed, and he could talk about, um, like, how did he get the money? He must have had a secret settlement deal with Scientology and Monique's cake baking business and all things that I wouldn't obviously be privy to. But again, she has all the dirt and information, so she wanted me to release that. At the time, I wanted to speak out about Marty, and I also was under the impression of Karen and other individuals who were painting Marty to be this, like, turncoat spy for Scientology. So I said, you know what? I'll release the information, but I want to say I have a source. She's like, no, 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 you have to say it's yours, my Karen. No one's going to believe I have this information on my own, right? And she said, nope, you have to say you have a source. So no one could tell me what to do, even though if I was still kind of under her control. But I said I had a source, or I might have implied it was her. She might have known that people knew that we were connected. So I had to basically go out and say I had a source. She called me up and left me voicemail after voicemail, calling my husband, chewing my ear off, screaming I have to take the video down, take it off my channel, tell me what to do with my YouTube channel. And just like you guys saw before where she'd be like, don't post about your mental health on the internet, don't do this, don't do that. She was always trying to tell me what to do. I am my own free person, I can do whatever the hell I want. If you want to post that information, Karen, why don't you do it on your YouTube channel? You have multiple different platforms to speak out about Scientology. Like, why does everyone else have to do it for you? Aren't you this OT8 class 12 auditor? You're like the very top of Scientology's organization, right? So why can't you speak out and be able to communicate with anyone on any subject? And I also challenge you too, I know you're watching this, I challenge you to make it right by me and contact me and try to come to a resolution instead of asking every single other person in the universe to do that for you. So, she chewed my head off and when she couldn't control me, she tries to control me through my husband and tell my husband to try to upset him so then he yells at me or gets mad at me. So then I feel like I have to do right by my husband if, you know, he was friendly with Karen, didn't want to either upset her. You, you guys know what I'm trying to say, right? Like she tries to use other people and if she can't get through to them, that's when the trouble starts brewing. So it's stuff like that, where she tries to get other people to release things or tell certain stories for her. And with the media, with what basically happens is she promises like she can get you media interviews and she can get you um, on the news or she can kind of get you and kind of lift you up. So what happens is if you have the most real estate in the ex-Scientology world, who's the, the journalist gonna contact? Her or Tony Ortega? Tony Ortega, I think, once even gave my name in the last year or two to like the New York Post because the journalist will say, hey, who's another source that we can speak to? So Karen, of course, is only going to refer people that are in her good graces. She's going to answer the phone and say, hey, person A, B, C, speak to them. And then Karen's going to call them and what she does is she calls it coaching. And she'll try to coach those individuals to say certain things according to the narrative that she wants to be told. She's not going to say Steve Mango, and now if a journalist calls, she'll say, hey, he's a fraudster, right? So that's what I risk is losing the ability to be able to speak out publicly if she's in control of the media as well. So the ex Scientology narrative is all spun and all comes under the umbrella of Karen. So when Marty Rathbun was talking about the anti-Scientology cult and all that, I honestly, even though I have my own feelings about Marty, what I said in my video about Marty and my feelings about Marty still stand, and I stand by those. It was just Karen was directing those videos, right? But what I'm trying to get at and trying to say is that Karen is in control of the anti-Scientology movement. And I think that's a very scary thing that one individual is able to control all of the conversations that are going down about Scientology. And that's why, as you guys can see, why people are so scared to come out in criticism of Karen de la Carriere. If you're a critic and you speak out and you're 
might not have friends or other people in your life, these other individuals are all kind of connected, but they play the same games. So even though we'll talk more in part three about all of this, I know you guys will have more questions for me and I want to be able to clarify things. I'm going to go into the history of Karen more and there's just so much more that I want to talk about, but basically I was disconnected from from all the ex Scientology groups. And you know, it might be a good thing. Like I've been saying it too, like I wanna to go to nursing school. I wanna be an aesthetic nurse. Like I wanna do other things with my life. So I'm just not under this person's thumb 24 seven around the clock to expose Scientology. I love what I do. I love exposing Scientology, but I don't like the cult-like dynamics of the ex Scientology community. I'm just gonna call a spade a spade and sell it like I see it, right? And now, on the back channels, because Karen hasn't been able to confront me, what she does, and just like she did to these other members like Alonzo and other people who have come up in critical nature of Karen, she goes and she writes to every ex Scientologist she spends all day and all night on her little command channels saying Stephen Mango's a fraudster. I was being called like all different names, being alleged that I'm attacking other critics. I'm a Scientology spy. Unfriend him. He may be trying to gather intelligence on you. I'm just here in my you know, on my couch in quarantine, and I make videos about things that I'm passionate about as a whistleblower. Um, you really think gay Stephen Mango's back in the Church of Scientology? Like, it's just like so silly, and it's a way for her to protect her mind so she doesn't have to take accountability or responsibility for what she did to me. Because if she could just rationalize or think in her mind, oh, Stephen Mango must be a spy. Stephen Mango's under control with all these other people who are anti Karen. Stephen Mango's being paid. He has some other bad intention. Oh, oh my God, you call me even a grifter. Stephen Mango's a grifter. Meanwhile, my husband's a lawyer. We live in a very nice house. I'm not hard up for money where I'm. I'm like taking from people and then I go off and get Botox as if I'm like raising money on my channel oh because I have a patreon right first off with patreon pretty much all content creators have one I haven't talked about it on my channel in many years see where I've even mentioned it like on video I leave it in my description box if anyone wants to leave me a donation but that's not why I do my channel obviously I get my own AdSense payments so it's not like I'm like living off of my um, AdSense money that I get from my YouTube channel from having ads and stuff on my videos but again she's acting like I'm using that money to go off and get Botox. I get nine dollars a month on Patreon. Haven't talked about Patreon in years. I just wanted to interject and show you guys that Patreon is actually a popular platform for other creators to raise money for extra bonus content. It's not a charity but it's a website where you can post additional content for your fans. Someone such as Chris Shelton has a Patreon as you guys can see here with levels from one dollars up to fifty per month. He has 199 patrons and he makes $1,460 a month on his Patreon page. What actually is the truth is I have and I'm um, a kind of a smaller beauty influencer and I do aesthetic um, treatments and stuff on YouTube and I have a whole other channel called Beauty Fruit. You guys can check it out down below and I'm starting that up and what happens are other aesthetic clinics and providers actually do complimentary services on me in exchange for me to promote it on my Instagram and other social media platforms. And also I go to like different like medical trainings and stuff and doctors actually get trained to inject on my face. Because like I said, I want to be an aesthetic nurse. I have a fascination with that world. I want people to look and feel beautiful and I love to get those type of treatments done. So I don't pay for those treatments anyways, Karen. And I could provide all the names of those providers and they could clarify I don't get paid to, or rather, I don't pay them for those type of services. It's like an exchange type of thing. It doesn't matter. It's just the fact that she's making up stories about me. Whereas think of how toxic it is for your mind to around the clock be so obsessed with Scientology, David Miscavige, anti-Scientology, running a cult, telling people what to post. Honey, go on Outer Banks and post this. It's like basically it's like she writes the posts and puts your name on it, right? So she's like so obsessed around the clock, controlling, watching all of what's being said in the Scientology world. It's like, oh my God, like I don't want that to be, to be me. Like I want to be able to move on with my life and I'm not going to have this channel be like me speaking out about critics. I'm going to speak out about Scientology, but like I said, I might go to school. I might work on one of my other YouTube channels. I have like five other channels, guys. You don't even realize that because most of you just are interested in the cult stuff, but I have a whole life outside of this, guys. And anything that takes up that much space in your mind isn't healthy. So I would, again, just challenge this person to seek out and instead of, having this like authoritative figure, like I'm a class 12 auditor. I was very high up. I was the queen of Scientology. There's no such title. She was married to the president of the church. Um, she used to be. So like she has all this sort of title thing. It doesn't mean anything. And these ex Scientologists play this victim game. I was in the Sea Org, Mango wasn't. I was on staff. I was more victimized. I was abused this way. 
who is Stephen Mango to be speaking out every single day and act like he's so harmed by Scientology? I had it worse. And they play these like victim ranking games. It's exhausting, it's tiring, and I'm glad that now I could be away from that because I was blocked from all the ex-Scientology community. Everyone's unfriending me just like Scientology. There's fair game of others um, slandering me online and calling other ex-Scientologists, telling them to come in defense of Karen without even seeing my video. Karen's telling people my videos in theta. It's fake. It's false and fake news. And in the age of Trump, it's easy to be able to um, just use the thing fake news instead of having to really address claims against you. It's easy just to say something's fake news instead of really being able to take accountability for your actions or make it up or make it right by someone else. If you're receiving payments for a service that you aren't qualified to deliver, I would think the best thing to do is refund those payments. I would think that if you harm someone and told them like not to seek mental health therapy, it's, there's just like so many different things. I mean, I don't even know what the right thing is and it's not about money. It's not about any of that other than just doing the right thing by speaking out about this person. So if you've just left Scientology and you reach out to someone like Karen or you get invited into the outer banks or whatever, you're going to start having your mind played with and manipulated. And we're going to be looking into that even more in a part three with more screenshots, more proof, more evidence and everything because I think it's important to do all of this and put this out there publicly so Karen could hopefully become accountable and to hold her accountable for her behavior and her actions. And now that I'm disconnected from, again, outside of Scientology, I realize those people weren't really my friends. It was conditional if I was going along with the cult leader of Dear Leader Carrier. And I really think that, you know, it goes to show you that even outside the church, these same cult members are unable to do critical thinking. And it's just very funny that people who do call themselves critical thinkers and they're being able to, you know, speak up critically about Scientology and then they go and they can't even look at both sides. They can't see how Karen's harming people or doing things that are very toxic on her Facebook groups or just like their relationship with Karen or what she's doing to other people. They can't even look at it. They say, no, 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 it's in theta. No, 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 it's critics attacking critics. No, 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 this is all wrong. It's like, you're not a critical thinker. Then you leave a cult, you would think that the very first thing you would do leaving a cult is in any other relationship because you could have a one-on-one -on -one cult, never mind your group cult, but you would start analyzing different things in your life to see if your mind is under someone else's control. And now I feel so much more free because I don't have to worry like, what if I say the wrong thing? What if I upset Karen? What if I get kicked out of the group? What happens if, um, you know, I don't obey her wishes and, you know, she'd even get mad and I could probably, I might have shown you guys the screenshots. Oh my God, Steve, you didn't like my post. Why couldn't you do this? I've done so much for you. It's like, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. Karen said, no action. Come on, Steve. I've worked my butt off to support you. And I ask you to do a little something and no go. I said, just waking up now, I'll happily comment. She goes, thanks, dear. Again, this is just one of hundreds of examples of what Karen does in order to get people to do her dirty work. A lot of other people receive actual cash payments as donations. I think, I don't know if it's true, but Tony Ortega probably has received thousands of dollars. Allegedly, his book tour with Paulette Cooper was funded by Karen De La Carriere. People like Mike Rinder, I'm sure, have maybe, I don't know if it's true or not, probably got donations to his blog from Karen. Because, again, that would prevent Tony from putting this video. You don't see Tony Ortega posting about this video that's blowing up in the ex Scientology world. Even David Miscavige's own father is commenting on my video, but you don't see Tony Ortega writing an article about it. Why? Because it would upset Karen, who has also, you know, probably provided either payments or just controls, like, I'll give you this information, Tony, I'll give you this thing. Because he probably also doesn't want to come under criticism of someone like Karen and see if that's how dangerous it is. Like, oh, my paycheck is going to be cut off, right? So that's what Karen does. She tries to influence people with money and financial compensation. And even if it's not a lot of money, just like when um, she wanted me to edit videos for her and stuff, like, I'll give you payments, even if it was like $50. It wasn't worth the $50, but someone like Anger Gay Pope gets payments from Karen. So what happens? He unfriends me on Facebook. So it's stuff like that. So it's like, okay, who's paying my bills? Mango or Dear Leader Carrier? And they pick and choose. Should I post this article about Karen or something that might be about one of Karen's friends? Oh no, because she's going to not support my blog anymore or whatever it is. So 
These are all different things that I hope you guys are excited to see more about in part three. If you guys have more stories about Karen or you want to share your thoughts or just about my video and you want to um, chime in, I love reading in the comment section down below to hear all your support and to know that I'm not alone in all of this. I've been getting gas lighting for so many days. I've had Karen sending people to investigate me, ask me different questions, make me feel bad and make me feel wrong. Like, oh my God, why did I post this video? Did I do the wrong thing? And I've had others like literally infiltrating my life and my comments and my emails and phone calls to try to get me to take my video down, a bully to harass me. There's been so much to this, more so than the harassment I've, I've even received from Scientology up to date has been worse in the last couple of days from Karen De La Carriere. So in part three, let's look more into the aftermath and I'm going to give it another few days so we can let all this percolate and we can actually see what Karen does as a result of me posting this video right here. And if I hear from her, if anything happens, I'm gonna let you guys know. Maybe she'll, she still has a chance to do the right thing. And I hope that she's able to not just use other people to slander and attack me, that she might even just contact me to be able to do the right thing by me instead of having other people have the very serious bad accusations against me that aren't even true. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Again, if you want to share your story about Karen, let me know if you want me to interview you or if there's a part three that you want to contribute something to, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure that you're subscribed, turning on your bell notifications. You'll get an alert when part three is released and all future Mangotology videos. Give this video a thumbs up. I love all of my Mangotologists here in a non-cultic way. Um, I love all of you guys so, so much. Thank you for standing by me over the years. I love you guys and I will See you in my next video. Bye, guys. Before I let you guys go, I just wanted to ask you guys to write to Karen on social media or via email and hold her accountable for what she did to me. If Karen just ignores my videos and she has me blocked and she just moves on and carries on as normal, then she's never going to be able to change her behavior because no one's holding her accountable to it. And as she's not able to have a conversation with me, I think it's important if you guys want to, again, I'm not a cult leader and I don't dictate you guys to do anything. Things. So if you don't want to, then of course I totally understand. But if this video has enraged you, then I would implore if I was you to possibly write to Karen, tell her to give Steve Mango a refund, tell her to address all of the different claims that I made in my video, tell her to make it right by Stephen Mango. And what about the others, such as Anger Gay Pope and Ron Miscavige and his wife and Mark Headley and all these different individuals? I think that if they go and disconnect from others, just because Karen De La Courier advises them to do that, then I think that they're just cult members too. So I think that that's something that should be brought up and something that they should have brought up in their face and saying, hey, you're willing to disconnect and play Scientology's games? Are you a Scientologist too? And see what they say. I just think it's very interesting that these people are critical thinkers and then they go off and engage in behaviors that happen inside the Church of Scientology. So thank you again so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon for part three of this video. Bye guys.